Hi guys, this is the tutorial for perspective. Um, as you can see, you just have this blank piece of paper is taking up the whole screen. Um, for the perspective drawing, all that you need is a ruler, a pencil that's pretty sharp. You also need, um, of course, a piece of paper. Um, I've done work recently on some cardboard. Um, you could use it on the back of anything that you have, a worksheet, anything of that sort works just as long as it's a plain piece of paper or a little spot that you can draw. I also have used in the past a Craig's Cruisers card. As you can tell, I kind of used it as my straight edge too as well. Any of those things can help you with this perspective. Now the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want my horizon. Now I'm going to kind of show off the edge of my paper here, but I'm going to kind of find a good spot. We're going to do kind of in the middle here of the horizon. So I'm just going to do a nice straight line. Now remember the horizon is also your, um, your eye level. Where do you see? Where the sun and the earth meet. Okay, so that is what the horizon is. So I, here's my horizon. Okay, I'm also now going to put in that vanishing point. Now your vanishing point is a tiny little dot. So I'm going to label these while we're doing this. This is again the horizon. And this little guy is my vanishing point. So I have my vanishing point, which is really tiny, and my horizon line, which is this big line across. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to figure out what square or idea I'm going to draw. So I'm going to actually draw a nice little square down here, okay? I'm actually going to use my Craig's Cruisers card for this because I'm going to kind of just estimate what size I want it to be. Oh, let's go ahead. Yeah. All right, so now when I measure the top part of my square, I'm going to make sure that it matches the same angle as my horizon line. So I want to make sure that, again, it matches the same angle as my horizon line so that when I draw it, it doesn't look cuckoo crazy. And I'm going to do the same thing with my vertical lines. It's got to be parallel to the paper. So again, I'm going to kind of match up my card to the paper. Make sure it's nice and straight, it's not crooked. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to go ahead and draw, I don't know, it doesn't matter how wide you want it, just whatever you feel like doing. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Whatever this is, I'm going to just slide it over. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And then, of course, doing the same thing with my card. Get that angle for that line there. And do that line. Now as you can see I have a little bit left over that's okay we'll just kind of erase that. Alright so I have my rectangle. Now I want to make it into a cube. Now we've practiced cubes before but this time I want it to be what we like to call that foreshortening where it's getting big to small. Right? We have this flat part we're gonna go this way. The next thing is what we're going to do is the converging line. So you're going to meet up from the vanishing point to the very tip part of your square. So you're going to meet from the vanishing point to the very tip part of that square where that corner is and you're going to draw a line. Okay, just like that. And we're going to do that to one, two, and three squares. We're not going to do it to this one. We can definitely just to show you what it looks like. Um, but for this time, um, we're not going to do that. We're going to just do it for every single square that we see. So I'm going to do it again using my card here. And I'm going to go from my vanishing point to this corner here. Okay, and then I'm going to do it again from this vanishing point to this corner here. So vanishing point to corner. There we go. So, as you can kind of start to see, it looks almost like a big cube or a row, of like this row is popping out at us, right? That pop out moment, that huge, like it's boom, popping out. Well, that's what we're doing. We're going to make it look like it's popping out at us. 
So the next thing we're going to do now, we're going to do what we call cutoff lines. So again, these are called, I'm just going to label them for you, converging lines. Okay, because they're converging to the vanishing point. Now we're going to do the cutoff. So how wide do I want this cube to be? I can make it super wide, right? Like a row of lockers, or I can make it small, like just a little cube. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to aim for like something over here. So I'm going to try to keep this angle of my line and I'm going to keep it as straight as I can. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing this way. My cutoff line needs to match whatever this line is. If it doesn't match, then it's going to be really hard to make it look like it's popping out, like it's three-dimensional. Okay. So now we have, again, now we have one, two. We could, like I said, if I wanted to, I can show you that right now. Again, from this corner to the vanishing point. I'll just do it very lightly so you could see that it's looking as if it's three dimensional. And I'm gonna do the same thing then for this angle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and match that angle. And draw it down. If you notice, I'm not drawing all the way through, I'm just drawing to the edge of that converging line. So it gives us this three-dimensional feel that makes sense so the next thing is also adding shading okay if I wanted to make this look like a box that you can get into right I could do something like this right here's this nice little shadow here put some shadows here Yeah, remember the lights and darks. And then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna do it this way too, just a little bit. Just so you could see. And as you're shading, remember as you're shading, when you get closer to the horizon, the darker and blurrier it gets, right? The when things get closer to the background. It gets dark and blurry and you can't see it. But when it's really close up to you or to the edge of the paper, it's gonna be really light and then it's gonna fade dark. Okay, so just remember that as you're shading or if you get a chance to practice shading this week is to kind of keep it where if it's really dark up in here, we're gonna have this nice light look. Okay, so there we go. So now we kind of have, it looks almost like a hallway, doesn't it? Like it's, oh, it's going in. Um, that's exactly what we're going to see when you are doing your shading when it comes to your final. So again, just remember as you're working again from when you're shading, again, you're working from those lights and darks. And you're also making sure that you're adding in as it gets closer to the horizon the darker it gets and then as it comes closer it's lighter to make it look like a picture okay if you have any other questions that is the bit of tutorial of how to do a box on a um on one point perspective we will um you do have another um video for your assessment or for your, I'm sorry, not your assessment, your IF for this week, which is connected to your um, assignment for this week. Again, this is just doing a box. I do want to see, you'll get to see, I would like a box. You'll get to do a box, a circle, or um, I'm sorry, a cylinder, and um, any other shape that you want. So that's going to be it. What I ask you to do is just kind of practice a little bit. I've also attached videos from other YouTube channels on how to explain perspective, just in case I didn't explain it very well, because I know sometimes it's hard. Um, not everyone is, is um, everyone can listen to what I'm saying. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy. See if you can make a box. 
And if you can, send a picture and send it to me. So thank you so much, guys. See you later. Bye.